What is going on everybody? Welcome back. Last week we were underneath the van and this week we're under the bed. Well, oh, it's a garage. <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess technically it is a garage. <laughs> so welcome to the garage of our van. So right behind us is where we are going to be installing um, the inside portion of our hydronic system. So if you didn't see the previous video, we are installing a hydronic D5E um, by S-Bar uh, system that is going to provide our van with hot water and um, hot air for heating the interior spaces. So last week we installed everything underneath. Today we are going to do the internal components, which include heat exchangers. Careful, these things are sharp, they'll cut your fingers. I've only done it like 10 times. And then this is our Calori, I don't know if you can see it very well in the picture, but it's a blower. Um, this will have coolant go through it and then oh more light more light um, it will have coolant go through it and then um, it will blow out hot air to warm the interior spaces of the van so we'll be working on that some today and then this is the header tank um, the actual storage tank for the coolant that's going to go through our system that will allow it to go through that um, I get it's not really a coolant for us it's a heatant <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> um, for our system. So this is what we're working. And then, of course, all the, the connecting parts to the system we'll be working on installing today. Now, you may notice a little bit of new construction here in the old garage. So we're building a platform so that we can put our water tank um, above where we're going to end up installing our heat exchangers, our water pump, our accumulator. And, of course, we have our inlet and outlet where our coolant, heatant, whatever Sandy said. <laughs> heatant fluid. <laughs> so our uh, our glycol, and we're going to probably end up using some form of glycol, so uh, that's where our glycol in and out is going to be in the van. So first thing we need to do is install our heat exchangers um, on the wall. Basically, we're going to mount them to the wall. So the problem we've had with this is finding brackets to mount them with. Um, we looked online, searched a million places, couldn't find anything. We went to a place here in town to have them fabricated. They wanted like $260 and we're not paying $260 for a couple brackets. So we looked at some other solutions online and someone had suggested that um, you can just cut a piece of wood and then mount it on with um, some metal strapping. So that's what we did is we created a piece of wood and then we've just screwed the strapping on front. This will go over the front of the exchanger and then we will just attach it to the wall. I'm glad we have such a big garage because you can actually get under here and work. So we've put our fittings onto our heat exchangers, our shark bite fittings, and we've cut our first piece of PEX to make our connection. Now we're using this three quarter inch PEX that's made for hydronic, uh, most commonly used in hydronic heating for like floors, which would have been a nice addition to the van if we had thought about it before we put the put the floor down but so next we're going to attach our heat exchangers to the walls with our fancy brackets okay so just in case you were interested in the size of fittings that we used here um, all of the um, the ports on the exchangers are three quarter inch ports so this side here is our uh, coolant side, so we are going from a three-quarter inch um, NPT or female NPT connector to the the PEX tubing, and it's going the fluid's going to run down here, across, and then back up. So all the fittings for this side are three-quarter inch, and then we are using half-inch fittings on this side. So we go from three-quarter to half-inch because that's what we're using for our water side. Now that we have the exchangers on the wall, we are working on the tank. Uh, this is where the reserve glycol will be held. And this, uh, it comes with these little standoff brackets. So we just attached it to this piece of wood and then we are actually going to mount it in here, right on the back side of our tank. And that's where it's gonna go. But before we hang it up here, we're gonna go ahead and put all of our fixtures on the bottom here. That way it's a little bit easier for us to work with. Okay, so we have the fittings on our tank. So we had three quarter inch barbs coming out of the bottom of the tank. We basically put a hose on there, clamped those in place, and transitioned it to a barb to PEX, which we're gonna to go to from there. 
So we have the header tank installed, our fittings on. Just basically cut out a backer board for the header tank and pocket hold it into the uh, bed support as well as the side of the wall. It's really sturdy. Hopefully we can still <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> so uh, we can hopefully be able to pour stuff. I don't know if we have enough room. If not, we'll have to think of it. But this is this is the best we could come up with for the header tank. So now we're on to cutting pecs. So cutting the pecs is kind of tricky. We've, we've got two different cutters. The stuff that we're using for the hydronic lines is, is thicker than normal pecs. It's with anti oxygen something. oxidizing something rather that's what makes it special and this is the kind you're supposed to use but so the regular cutters won't cut it because this is way too thick you just end up kind of crush cutting it so they have this little spin cutter which is a pain so you just push it down in here and you try to guesstimate where your blade's gonna end up I mean, there's really no way to, like... Okay, and you have to spin it a certain way. So spin. Ah, oh, worked much better that time. <laughs> Alright, so not so bad. This time. After you're cut, you're always supposed to deburr. It's a cool little deburring tool. Also tells you how far it will go into the fitting. Your pencil. Mark it to make sure. And there you have it. So this is the little cubby where our Kalori is going to live. We did put a couple of holes through the wall so we could get our pecs through. Uh, we made these little adapters out of hose and barb and into our shark bite connector. That way we can run our pecs from here through the wall and to where it comes in and out. So as you can see, finished coming through the wall with our pecs, hose adapters to our calorie heater. So we're just gonna show you how everything runs through the van here. It actually comes from underneath the van up through here, runs along here and into the first heat exchanger. It then goes through the heat exchanger, runs through here, up through the next heat exchanger. And it's hard to see back here, but if you come out here, you can see this pipe. It runs through this pipe, down, through the wall there, to the calorie. After it leaves the calorie, it comes through this here and up into our header tank. It will leave the tank back here, come back down, straight across and then back out to the heater under the van all right so that's how we ran our hydronic system through the inside of our van Ta-da! <laughs> so it was um it actually went pretty well uh, pretty simple to do most complicated portion of this for us was figuring out how to mount the heat exchangers to the wall and come up those brackets if you have any suggestions for that, please let us know. We'd love to change them out with something more a little more professional. If you are planning on putting these or heat exchangers in, make sure they come with brackets. It'll make your life easy. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm sure there are other things we could do, but these are working pretty good and we're happy with it. We'll keep an eye on them and make sure that they're they're holding up okay. But um, for now, that's what we have. PEX, super easy to work with. You Little, know. It's, it's tedious cutting and measuring mm -hmm. each piece, but that's to be expected. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see how these hold up over time, but um, we've heard good things about them and 
for simplicity's sake, it made it really easy. So. That being said, I'm nervous that they'll leak, but mm -hmm. I think that's with any plumbing system. I'm sorry we're not going to fire this system up today. Yeah, we still have a lot of electrical questions that we're trying to get answered, but we've um, finally got a hold of HeatSo and talked to them a little bit, so we think we have most of the answers. And then the Sprinter Forum has been fantastic um, wealth of knowledge for figuring that out. So we, in our next video, we will actually finish up the wiring, show you how we're running the wiring, um, and then put the glycol in this thing. Fire it up. Fire it up, see how it works. So be watching out for that video next week, hopefully. Next week or the week after, depending on how quickly we get stuff in for it. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. That's going to do it for this video, guys. And until next time, stay, stay wonderful. Call it a day.